Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back for another DIY room makeover on a budget. Yes, I have already done a room makeover on a budget in this guest room before, but I was pregnant at this point. I hadn't told you guys yet, but this is when I was early on in my pregnancy, exhausted, sick, and we had family coming to visit us. So I was kind of rushing to finish this room, only having half the energy to do it and really wanting to just get it over with. So I cut a lot of corners in this space and it has not held up like most of our other spaces have. So it is time to revisit at this space, redo it all. But to go over the DIYs we've already done to this space, we painted this bed frame white with white chalk paint. I do this all the time in my videos, so watch any other room makeover basically, and you'll see this painting process for painting the furniture. We also did a peel and stick wallpaper, but this wallpaper was very, very poor quality. It started peeling off immediately, and I have been itching to tear it all down and start over and just do a complete redo on this space since then. So do not recommend cheap wallpaper. I do love to do things on a budget, but sometimes you will pay for trying to go on a budget. So I definitely paid and learned the lesson of not going the cheapest route possible for everything. And I think this new room makeover is leaps and bounds better than what we started with. One other DIY we've done in here is the nightstands I built and then painted for our living room a while ago. They are coming back upstairs to the guest room though, but I wanted to share that we also did some chalk paint DIYs to turn these natural wood color nightstands to a black color. So now that you are up to date on all of the DIYs, let's dig into what is new in this room. This room has clearly become the dumping ground. It's where everything that does not have a home lands. So I'm moving all that out into the landing zone just to clear up this space. I'll address the mess later on, but first I just need to have a clear space to even be able to start working in here. And the first thing I have been dying to do and itching to do for so long is finally rip off all of this wallpaper. I'm not quite sure why it didn't stick. We do have textured walls, so that might be it, but I also have wallpaper in our daughter's nursery and that has held up perfectly. So I think it's the quality of this wallpaper it was like 20 bucks a roll from Amazon. So like I said earlier, maybe not always the best idea to go for the cheapest option, but I guess the only good thing about this, the silver lining, is that it came off super easily and didn't leave behind any marks on the wall. I was prepared to have to do like touch up paint on if it pulled any paint off, but it didn't. But that probably is why it didn't stick so well. Also, you may notice that I have the best little helper. Madeline is joining me on and off for this entire project, hanging out in her bouncy chair or on the bed or with dad. But with the wallpaper tape Taken down, I'm gonna be moving on to the first DIY in this video, which is the DIY arch accent wall. I'm a few years late on this trend. I've seen it around for a while, but I found an inspiration picture on Instagram that I basically wanted to replicate and have this be how the room looked like. And the big accent wall in the Instagram photo is a dark arch wall above the bed frame. So here I'm gonna to start to DIY that, and I probably should have looked up like an article or two on the best way to do this, but this little method that I had worked out pretty well. So I grabbed some string and um, we don't have string, we're using floss here, getting resourceful. And I'm tying one end of it to a pencil and the other end to a push pin. And I figured out exactly how wide I wanted the arch to go. I knew I wanted a couple inches of overhang on either side of the headboard. And then I cut that length in half. So that ended up being three feet total. And then I put the push pin in the wall and took my pencil attached to the push pin and drew a half circle around the bed. It took a couple of passes with the pencil to get it just right and to try to get a really smooth edge but it worked like a charm. I was actually really impressed with how simple it was. I figured I would have to give up and try again later or like look up a different way to do that. But with the pencil lining on the wall, Christian came up to help me move the bed out of the way and then it was time to start painting. Just thought I should let you know, yeah. Don't know, no one's no more, no. I got 
Now, I want to offer you guys some encouragement if you like this DIY and want to try it for your own home, but you're worried you're not artistic enough to freehand paint this. I am the least artistic, like with paint and paper, like I cannot draw well at all. And I was really nervous about actually painting this arch because there's not an easy way that I can think of to actually tape this off. So you kind of have to freehand at least the curved part. If you really are nervous about the uh, bottom part, you can tape off the straight lines all the way down but you're kind of on your own for painting the edge of the arch and I was so pleased with how easy this was. I went really slow, I gave myself plenty of time and I had lots of patience while I did this process and I'm actually really impressed with how this freehand process worked. take a quick mention of the MVP of this project being this really inexpensive paintbrush. I talk about this little guy all the time, but he's like four or five bucks and I use him for so many projects. And I know I could have rolled the paint on to make this process go so much faster, but honestly, I love this little paintbrush so much. It's easiest to use that and then not have to worry about getting a roller dirty or the, um, what is it? The paint pan. So I prefer to go with the paintbrush for smaller areas like this. I'll have this one linked down below. And also if you're curious about about the paint color. This is from Valspar, which is sold at Lowe's, and it's the color Tornado Watch. future project I definitely want to tackle though, <laughs> super random, is the garage organization. You might be confused about what I'm using here to screw back on these little plates and it's actually a chisel for like chiseling wood. I could not for the life of me locate any of our flathead screwdrivers. I know we have many of them but this is like the closest thing I could find but the only problem is is it kind of scraped up these plates a little bit. Obviously it's sharp and not meant to be used in this way so a future project of ours is definitely going to be organizing and deep cleaning the garage garage because all of these little projects, we are not always the best at putting things back where they belong and we don't have the best systems set up out there. But side tangent, that's why I'm using a chisel for this.
The nightstands were already DIY'd before this project even started, so I just pulled these back upstairs and then used some Target lamps on either side of them. I will have everything that I can find and or use in this project linked below in the description bar, but if I'm missing anything, just leave a comment or DM me over on Instagram and I will go hunting for that. And now onto the next DIY is Christian's going to be building me a bench. We went to Home Depot or Lowe's, I think it was Lowe's, and we actually just bought one piece of two by eight wood. We had it cut down to length in the store so it would fit in our car. And then Christian back at home brought out the big power tools and made it absolutely perfect. I could probably describe to you everything going on here, but I'm just gonna link some DIY um, tutorials down below. Some of them involve more power tools than others, but to build this bench, you definitely do not need the table saw, the circular saw, and all the tools that we use. There's definitely simpler ways to build a bench like this, and I will have those articles linked down below. But if you've ever met my husband, he never does anything halfway, and so if I asked him to build me a bench, he was going to do it as perfectly as possible. So he just ripped down the two by eight boards to fit perfectly next together to make the top of the bench, and then he's going to glue them together. Basically, wood glue is super, super strong and stronger than the wood. So if you like tried to break this, the wood itself would actually break before the glue did. So it's actually a great tool to use. So if you're new to this whole DIY world or you start wanna tinkering around with DIYs and building things like this, I would definitely recommend starting out with wood glue projects because one, it's a lot less expensive or scary or dangerous than all of these saws, but two, it's also super strong and super sturdy. So the top of this bench is going to be held together by glue and then he's going to just clamp it together while it dries. I could go for this, no more tricks, we could take things slow. The next day we unclamped the top of the bench and then moved on to cutting down the legs. I wanted this bench to be really simple and have really clean lines, so we decided to just stick with having two planks be the legs of this. It doesn't make it the sturdiest bench ever, but we're not going to be using this in a heavy traffic, high traffic area, so I'm kind of okay with it not being like the world's strongest bench. Next we're going to cut down the two planks to the correct height to be the legs, and then before we build it all together, it's going to be easiest to sand each piece individually. And Chris was so lovely to volunteer to do all of the sanding himself so he took this out to the backyard and then with our orbital sander smoothed all of these pieces down To attach the legs, we pulled out our Craig jig, and this just puts in little pocket holes that make it easy to screw these legs directly into the top of the bench. So we did three pocket holes on each of the legs and then took, I don't know the exact length, but a certain length of wood screw that sticks down and then attaches this, and that's how easy this bench was. It's really simple, pretty straightforward, and about as basic as you can get for building something like this. Christian originally wanted to make it way more complicated and put like an A-frame base and all kinds of different things and I had to basically beg him to keep it simple and easy and I know it's still a little bit intimidating if you are not in the woodworking world or like doing any of these projects it's still a ton of tools and very expensive to buy this but I will say that if you think you would enjoy this kind of project or these kinds of things for your home it's definitely worth it Deep into this flow. 
If you guys remember from the inspiration photo that I showed earlier from Instagram, there was a black bench at the foot of the bed and that's really what inspired this entire project. So of course I wanted to paint this bench black and typically my go-to type of paint for painting furniture is chalk paint. Both the headboard and the nightstands were painted with chalk paint, but neither of those colors were the color that I really wanted for this. I wanted a true deep dark black and the chalk paint I used on the nightstands was more of a charcoal color and not exactly what I wanted, but I did have this interior paint that was like the darkest black I have ever seen. So I was willing to be a little bit riskier with this. Normally chalk paint just is more durable and holds up better, which is why I opt for it most often, whereas interior paint's probably more likely to chip or not stick as well. So for this project, I'm trying out the interior paint kind of as an experiment, also because I didn't want to buy any other materials for this project, and I already had this on hand. And I also had another product on hand that probably is going to make this just a fine way to paint this piece of furniture. around your arms instead of being lonely we could be gazing at the stars but now it feels just like i wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me one of my favorite DIY hacks is for painting multiple coats of paint is to put your paintbrush in a Ziploc bag and then store it in your fridge. That way you don't have to wash your paintbrush in between coats of paint. But now onto that other hack that I'm pretty sure is gonna make this paint job okay and it's a polyurethane top coat. We also had this on hand in the garage. It's what we used to finish the dining table that Christian built for us a while ago. And so we have a couple cans of this and this stuff can be a little bit tricky so do your research before you use this. You wanna make sure that you stir it you don't shake it and the best way that we have found to apply it is to pour out some of it in the can into a disposable pie dish and then this little paint pad is the easiest way to get a smooth application on whatever surface so I just dip the paint pad into this pie dish and then coat it on slowly if you have about 60 ish seconds to work with the product before it starts to set and get tacky and all you want to do is try to make sure that it's all seamless and that there are no bubbles in it and then also on any edges you want to make sure there's no drips or like things falling down so the product's a little tricky but you definitely get used to it after a while and I love the finish that this gave to the bench it still is a flat finish so it's not super shiny or high gloss but it just looks a little bit more pulled together and a little bit more professional and like I bought it in a store instead of Christian and I just making it in our garage one weekend so finally that's the last little DIY that we're building from scratch so I brought that up into the room and now it's time to do the fun part for me which is the styling and pulling the space all together Sometimes I just don't know what to do Cause it should have been you It should have been you I could be wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely It should have been you Now everything on the bed right now I had already owned, but I did place an online order from Target to get a bunch of fun throw pillows and Euro pillows and everything to really pull the space together. And then also from Marshalls, I ordered a fun blanket to go at the foot of the bed. And all of it was inspired from that same Instagram photo. I referenced that photo so many times, like from being in Lowe's, picking out the paint color, to planning the bench, to picking out the bedding. All of the details kind of came and were not definitely inspired by that Instagram picture. Now over in the corner, I thought I needed a little Little something extra so I also picked up this plant from Target and you'll see me place it here and walk away and then Christian's gonna help me come hang a frame in this space and he reminds me it doesn't look that great there it's just not the right touch to go in that corner so you'll see that we have another solution for decorating that space you 
One last piece of decor inspired by the Instagram photo is this wire wreath hanging above the bed, and I think it's just the perfect touch on this wall. This is when you try to make me fall. Now I'm gonna switch out this plant for the mirror. If you watched the first guest bedroom makeover, you know that this mirror was in this exact spot before and I'm gonna stick with it. It was previously down in our garage gym, so we might need to find a new mirror for down there, but I do think it looks better in this little corner than the plant. It was just too much green on green. It was a little busy. And because I am extra and I just am the way that I am, I saw that it was basically the same exact color as the wall and I wanted to paint it a little bit of a different color. So I'm going to tape off the edges of the mirror and grab a slightly different paint color. I realized after I painted it, it's like essentially the same exact color. It's actually the color that I use to paint our half bathroom downstairs, but you'll barely be able to tell the difference in colors. Honestly, I probably should have just left it the way it is, but I just had to try something a little different. And the last thing happening in this space is hanging this print, which is also from, you guessed it, Target. They were having a big sale when I ordered all of this. Most things were 20% off, if not more, so I felt a little bit better about buying this much new stuff. You guys know that I normally like to repurpose things, but also this room is pretty empty to begin with, so I needed to buy a couple things. So Christian's coming in clutch here, gonna hang this big frame up, and then there is one more slight change that I'll show you in a second. Nothing too crazy, but a few more decor things are gonna happen over here. Remember the flame, you remember the flame Now my inspiration photo had this bench at the foot of the bed and that was my original intentions with building it, but the way this room works, it just made a little bit more sense to have it up against this wall. There wasn't any furniture there and it also opened up the walkway to walk into this room a little bit more. It made it feel a little bit bigger and a little more complete and it helped hide all those outlets. So we do have the bench pressed up against this wall now and I might for an Instagram picture, might just have it up against the bed just to like be able to show that I was inspired by that. But that's where the bench is ultimately gonna live, I think. I think it's a good spot to either sit to put your shoes on or rest a bag or something. And then I did ultimately end up moving the plant over to that corner just to fill in a little more gap and to bring some more color over to that side. Now, in case you've already forgotten what we started off in this room, here is what it looked like when I began this project. The before shot after the first makeover kind of failed and flopped and this turned back into a junk room. But now this room is not going to be a junk room. With it being this light and airy and pretty, like I love this space. I almost like it more than our personal bedroom. I think it has a little more character and some more color and some more contrast. So it's making me think about what we're doing in our bedroom and maybe changing things up there a little bit. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some DIY ideas. Leave me a comment if you enjoyed it and what your favorite DIY was. Make sure you like this video and are subscribed if you're new here, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!